Okay, we've learned a lot about transports and protocols, but now it's time to put that information to use. Let's build our first demo. This demo is going to be a cellular data logging system. For our first demo, we're going to be using a Fona feather with an OLED display. We've got the antenna and battery, so it's nice and mobile. It's on a breadboard, and we've connected a temperature sensor. All we're going to do is take data using the temperature sensor every five seconds and send it over the cellular connection to Adafruit I.O., which will act as our data broker. Since we're using cellular, which requires a lot of power and you're paying per megabyte, we're going to use MQTT. That's because MQTT, as you know now, is a lower bandwidth way of sending and receiving data. It's better tuned for cellular use. Once you've created your Adafruit I.O. account, you can log in and see all your feeds. The MQTT broker on Adafruit I.O. will create a feed whenever you start sending data to it. So you don't even have to create the temperature feed if you've uploaded the data to your Feather phone app. It'll automatically be generated for you. And if you click on it, you'll be able to see your temperature data being logged. If you scroll down, you can even see each data point as it's entered into the MQTT broker. Our cellular temperature demo was pretty simple. We're just publishing temperature data. So let's make a little bit more advanced demo this time. We're going to be using a Feather Huzzah, which uses Wi-Fi. And in this case, we're going to control a lamp. We have a relay that powers the lamp on and off, an OLED for debugging, and we'll also add a photocell light sensor. Because we're going to be publishing as well as subscribing, we'll have to make that subscription feed. In your feed section, create a new feed called LAMP. And create it. Now, if you go to the LAMP feed, you can add values such as ON, which will turn the lamp on. And when you want to turn the lamp off, you add a new value called off. The MQTT broker on the Wi-Fi Huzzah reads the lamp feed and parses whether it got an off or an on signal, and that tells it whether to turn on or off the relay. While you could use an MQTT client or the website to manually enter data, it's a lot easier if you create a dashboard. You can make a new dashboard with any name. And then within the dashboard, you can create controls that send and receive data over MQTT to your main data feeds. For example, let's create a toggle block for the lamp. Now when we click this button, we don't have to manually enter in data. It does it for you. Now, whenever you have an IoT device, especially a relay or something that controls machinery, it's good to have a feedback channel. Now, you can set up quality of service with MQTT, but still, it's best to know whether your data was actually sent or received using some other sensor channel. In this case, we're going to be using a photocell. Let's create a new block for the photocell. This time, we're going to use a gauge. And the data ranges from 0 to 1,000. The data updates almost instantly. So when we turn on our lamp, we see the value go up. That way, we know that the light increased in the area and the lamp really did turn on. Likewise, when we turn the lamp off, we'll see the value go down. One of the nice things about having an internet-connected MQTT broker is that you can use all sorts of clients to interface to your data. For example, this laptop uses Wi-Fi or Ethernet, but you can also use a mobile phone, and that way send and receive data over cellular connection. For our third demo, we're going to build an internet-connected webcam. This is going to be watching our internet of teacups. For this project, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi computer, which has a camera connector. And that goes into this little camera, which is looking at my teacup. As a monitor, you can preview 
And since it's a Raspberry Pi, we've got Ethernet. Because the Pi 3 has Ethernet and we're in a stationary location, we're going to use Ethernet as our transport. Since the Raspberry Pi 3 has a full Linux computer inside, we can use Python and REST. Why REST? Well, because we're on Ethernet and power, we don't have to worry so much about saving data or power, and we can use the more powerful REST and Python API, which is really, really easy to use and makes this project a lot faster to put together than an MQTT-based project. What's interesting about the PyCam data feed is compared to our other feeds where we have temperature data or light sensors or on or off, the data in the PyCam isn't human readable. Instead, we're sending base64 encoded images. In this case, it's up to 18 or 19,000 bytes of data. So we're not going to be able to graph this data. Instead, it has to be parsed and interpreted. One of the nice things about having an Adafruit I.O. dashboard, instead of just using a raw MQTT or REST client, is that Adafruit I.O. will parse your data for you. In this case, it will actually display the image that it's getting from the PyCam camera. To make this project a little bit more interesting, we added a subscription as well. The camera is uploading the image data to Adafruit I.O., and it's subscribing over REST to Interval. Interval tells it how often to take an image. For example, right now, it's set to take an image every 30 seconds. We can have it speed up a little bit, maybe take an image every five seconds. 